Thank you. Um, before I start, um, I wish to thank Darko Brodzinovsky and the uh, event organizers, volunteers, everybody who is here. I think um, I'm really happy that such a conference is taking place here. And also, I would like to thank the sponsors. And I hope that in the future we'll have many more DevCons. So, Lambda Pi, writing correct programs, what does that mean? Uh, before we start, something about myself. <coughs> My name is Boris Nikorski, software engineer at Automatic. We build awesome stuff with PHP and JavaScript and some TypeScript. Um, I'm mainly interested in programming languages, in general, functional, object oriented, and imperative. Um, I also have a lot of interest in mathematics, and as a consequence of that, I'm also interested in the relations between different programming paradigms. For example, how a piece of program written in one paradigm corresponds to the same logic in a different paradigm. That's what's interesting for me. And if you share the same interests, you can visit my technical blog, where I regularly post. Um, some of my self-funded research, which is just for fun. So, <clears throat> uh, let's talk a bit about what programming actually is. It is about telling computers what they should be doing. So, a programming language allows us to bridge our thoughts into a written form to marshal the computer and tell it what it's supposed to do. It is hard. If you are an experienced programmer, you will agree with that. Programming is always hard, and writing correct programs is even harder. Uh, by correct programs, I mean programs doing just what they are intended for, not more and not less. So, if we want to be able to write correct programs, there are a lot of uh, techniques to do that. One of the techniques is the so-called Lambda Pi theory. It's kind of like a... Its foundation starts at the type theory, from coming straight from mathematics. So in this presentation, what I hope to achieve is to spark up some interest about these theories. And, of course, I cannot cover everything that the theory is consisted of, but what I can do is just like give you a quick introduction to this type of programming languages that are built upon this theory. So <clears throat> I want to start with an example that some of you may, found, may find, um, some of you may have heard of. Um, there was some time ago, an NPM incident, where some guy has written a left pad function as a library, as a node module. So everybody that wanted to use this function, they just went ahead and added this module as a dependency instead of writing it on their own. And the question is, why would somebody do that? Why would a, such a simple function as left pad, why would anybody use, use it as a library? They would just implement it on their own. So, really, who should be using left pad as a library? Just go write their own. It sounds simple. What left pad is doing actually is you supply the string, like, for example, defcon, um, you supply a length as the second argument, which is the length of the output string that we're expecting, and as a third argument, you're supplying a character that should be uh, prepended to the original string, first argument, prepended up until length of 9. So for devcon 9w, we get www.devcon. For 003, we get an f, we get foo. And for hey, 3, and f, we get hey, because hey is already a length of 3. So it sounds very simple. You just like prepend this character a number of times to a string, that's it. You don't use a library for that. 
until you go to the NPM implementation and look at it. And you see that they are co covering a lot of edge cases, which then makes you think, OK, this is not as simple as I thought. Even though we, our description of the algorithm was simple, the implementation is a whole different story. So have we forgotten how to program? No, we haven't. Programming is very hard, even for simple things like left -hand. Um, in terms of software correctness, you could go ahead and write your own left pad, and you could, like for example, write it in a test-driven development approach. But test-driven de uh, test development approach is kind of limiting. Uh, this will become more obvious in the demo. But for now, if you're familiar with mathematical proofs, uh, test-driven development really corresponds to proof by example, which means that um, <clears throat> the mainstream language that we're using, for example, JavaScript, does not have this power of expressiveness in order to um, specify a predicate and also have the test confirm that this predicate is true or false. It works for some predicates, um, but it's kind of like a limited uh, expressiveness. For example, what I mean by that is you can't write a test to prove that left path of DevCon 6 of x will be equal to DevCon for all possible x's. You can't write a unit test for that. It's impossible because we don't have the <coughs> power to express that. So we are, we are entering type theory. Type theory is all about adding constraints to programs. We have variables, functions, and type theory is all about assigning types to these um, data. There are different type systems, and each has its own expressive power. So languages like Haskell, um, Lisp, ML, they're, all of them are usually based on this uh, type theory called lambda calculus. It's, um, it's really an untyped uh, theory, but from lambda calculus, we start to build the other theories, which are really entering the types. So um, for example, a typed uh, lambda calculus would be depending on, uh, would be implemented on top of lambda calculus with some additional features, which is to add constraints to variables. Then we also have polymorphic lambda calculus, which uh, adds polymorphism to variables. And there is a bunch of other theories. And finally, we arrive at the dependently typed lambda calculus, which is lambda pi. Um, <coughs> what is lambda pi? It's, it's really a way to, for us to represent computation at the type level. Computation at the type level is very important. Um, for example, in mainstream languages such as C sharp, you, you, you have some way to express stuff. For example, you can implement a function that takes an A and returns an A. So that's like corresponding to polymorphic lambda calculus. But it's really limited in the sense that you can't really do a lot of uh, computation at the type level like you would be able to do at the program level. So really dependent types is all about giving power to computation at the type level similar to that of the program level. Um, another important concept is the curry Howard isomorphism. It's named after the mathematicians Haskell Curry and William Howard. And what it's saying is that types are theorems and programs are proofs. Um, it's really, if you open its Wikipedia page, it's, it's going to take you a while to read it. So we'll just stick to this uh, definition of what it is, and we won't like get too deep into the details because it will take much more than a single presentation to do that. So um, given the curry power powered isomorphism and dependent types, we arrive at mathematical proofs, which is really awesome. OK, so for the demo, on the left side here, I have uh, an empty file. And on the right side, I will 
will launch the Idris REPL. So Idris is a programming language that supports dependent types. Its syntax is very close to Haskell, for those of you that have worked with it. And the way it's different from Haskell is that its type system is much more powerful. And there are some other small syntax um, differences, but it's not a big deal if you're familiar with Haskell. So for start, maybe we can implement left path. So it should take a string, which is a list of characters. Um, what was it? I forgot the order. So it's a string, it's a target, which is, so this is a natural number, the length. And yeah, uh, we also take a single character, and it should output a list of characters. So what, what we've done here is, we haven't yet implemented the program, but we um, defined, uh, we named the function left pad, and we only set what's the input arguments, and what's, what should the output be. So left pad of, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna write the program that corresponds to this type definition. So left pad of, let's say, string, target, and character, S, T, C, um, would be called, so how would we implement left pad right now? Um, for, let's say, we have this string. And what we want to do is prepend W it three times. So we would have something like W, 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 and we want to concatenate these two strings. So we just have a looping function for that. It's the double plus sign. <coughs> and this is how we would implement left pad manually for now. There is a built-in function, so there is a built-in function in Idris to do this kind of replication. So we have a single W and want to replicate it n times. There is a function that's called, really obvious, its name is called replicate. It takes a natural number, it takes a polymorphic type, whatever, it, it can be anything, and it returns a list of that type. So if you write replicate, W as a character, it will return www. So it means that we can use replicate here a number of times the character C. On top of that, we should concatenate the original string to this replication so that we get the um, proper output. So what the only thing that we should figure out right now is how many times should we replicate this? And it's really simple. Um, we want to replicate it. The, uh, the, so we have the target, which is like nine, the total length of the string. But if we, let's try to do this and see what we get. I will use colon R to reload the changes that I did. And I forgot to mention that colon T is a way to query Idris to tell you what um, particular type function has. So if we write left pad, that on of target nine with W, we get a lot of Ws. So this is the incorrect length. What we wanted to do was the final length should be nine, not like append, prepend W nine times. So for that, we will have to um, subtract from the target number the length of the <coughs> original string. And if I reload, we are getting the correct uh, output right now, which is what we wanted to do. You may have noticed that I'm using um, characters in a list, and it's re really hard to kind of uh, um, write all of that down. It would be much better if I could just write something like this. So Idris has a function named pack and another function named unpack. 
So with these two functions, what we can do is write a helper function, which would have a similar type to that file. And what it should be doing is, um, we won't have a list of characters anymore, but we will have strings here. So what we want to do right now is uh, call that path um, with, we need to convert this string to list of characters so that it corresponds to this argument here. So we write unpack for us, T and C. And if we reload right now, it should split an error. It means that <coughs> we forgot to pack here because left pad is returning a list of characters, but our function is returning a string. So this is very good because uh, the, the compiler is kind of beating your hand and saying, you're not doing something correctly, something is wrong. So we just call pack here. And hit type check successfully. So let's call left pad of defcon 9 value. And we get a string, which is much more readable than the list previously. So now that we've implemented left pad, next thing that we want to do is prove some property about it. Like, I can really mean a, a mathematical property, not like a write a unit test or something. Just try to prove something about it. But, um, before we do that, let's write uh, maybe a simple proof. Let's try to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So, <clears throat> as you can see, the type here is kind of a, you can view it as a theorem. It's really a mathematical theorem. 1 plus 1 equals 2 is, is really a theorem. And the proof for that, we don't know what it is. So Idris has a support for so-called holes. It's a variable that's prevented with a question mark. And if you do that, and you try to uh, run the type checker with this current program, Idris will tell you that it's type checked successfully, but there is a hole to fill. So it's kind of like an incomplete program, so to say. Um, with column T, you can check, check the type of the hole, and we can notice, a, we can, uh, at this point, <coughs> um, observe a very interesting thing, and that's how computation already occurred at the type level. So, we, we had 1 plus 1 here, but once it is type checked it, it inferred that 1 plus 1 is already equal to 2, and the type of the theorem now becomes 2 equals 2. <coughs> so <coughs> in order to prove this, there is a built-in um, constructor for this type. It's called REFL, which stands for reflexivity. And it's, it really means that if you have an x on the left side of an equal sign, and you have an x, the same x on the right side, then you can construct, um, you can use this constructor to fulfill the conditions needed for this type. Um, Idris has this colon doc command, which is really awesome. If you write colon doc repl, you, it will give you the explanation that I already gave, which is really awesome. You can use doc on almost anything, you can also use it on replicate. And so, for this case, you just write REPL. And Idris successfully did the type checking here, which means that 1 plus 1 equals 2 is a valid theorem, and we already gave the proof for it, which is REPL. That's interesting, so let's try to break it. Does 1 plus 2 equal 2? No, it will complain. It will tell you that you tried to use reflexivity on 3 equals 2, but reflexivity really expects on um, the equal sign, both the left and the right side, to be the same. So we can't break that. It didn't pass the type checking, so your proof is not valid. So, 
in order to get this um, simple proof, you can try to do something more interesting. Let's, for example, if you still remember the this statement here, that we cannot write the test to prove that left pad of that con six, 6 of x is equal to that con for all possible x's. Let's try to prove that and see how it looks. So what we want to prove is, we have a second theorem, we name it theorem underscore 2, that says left pad of that con 6 of x is equal to that con. Um, x here really does not have any context, so what we should do is define it. So what this function, we have yet to implement it, but what it does is it accepts a character, and as a result it returns a, an equality that says that left pad of defcon six for any character, whatever character this is, because we are polymorphic, x could be any character. It doesn't have to be like a specific one. It's really a... It just doesn't even care. It just wants to know that it's a character. So we say that left pad of defcon 6 of x is equal to defcon for any possible x. Not just like what you would do in quick check, for example. You can write something similar, but what it does... Um, in the background is it spits random <laughs> characters, which is really not, I mean, it's just a hack. So let's use holes again and see, so we accept the character here, and let's use a hole to see, <coughs> to, uh, to make it really help us um, and tell us what we need to show or provide it. So what it did here is a really interesting thing. As previous, <coughs> it used uh, evaluation at the type level, computation. It computed the left pad function that we used of defcon 6 of x, and it, it immediately noticed that it will be equal to defcon. So it's not running, like it's not similar to quick check, it's not doing any random stuff in the background, it's really just a type, a simple type checker with, with like no uh, random magic. <laughs> so what did we learn about equality that are equal on the left and the right side? Just use REPL. And since it didn't complain, what this means is that <coughs> we have proven that if you call left path on DEFCON with a target length of 6, since DEFCON is already 6, it will be equal to DEFCON for all possible axes. Um, we can also do some other crazy stuff, like, for example, uh, what I want to show with the next example is that not all proofs are easy, obviously. This is just like for demo purposes, but there are, there are also hard parts. For example, what if we wanted to show that for any natural number and any string and any character, so those, those would be STC, what if we wanted to show that the length of this guy would always be equal to t. t is the second argument of left path, which is the final length that we're expecting. So, um, I would just need to say that s is a list of characters, and then t, our target, is a natural number, and then c is a character. Let's see what this gives us use holes again. Now we are in a state that we don't really know what to do here. Um, I won't obviously go and actually prove this. I did it at home, but it's going to take a while. But what I want to <coughs> illustrate here is that Idris has a lot of built-in proofs that you could use. So for example, you could use that um, the length of replicate. So if you remember replicate, I'll show the type again. 
you could use that the length of replicate n is always equal to n some, for some uh, value. Idris has a built-in proof for this. So what we would do, use that proof, replace this part here with, with that proof, and then the uh, remaining thing that we need to prove will become much simpler for us. So um, you would just kind of simplify this proof up until the point where you get the reflexivity. In the end, it's usually always what you have to do as a proof engineer, so to say, is you have to equate this part of uh, the equal sign, the left hand side, with T. The way you would do that is you can use built in proofs or write your own proofs for uh, simplification, for stuff like length of replicate um, or string concatenation, things like that. Um, so that's for the demo and the conclusion is now that our dependent type of the future um, really there are other ways to prove uh, software correctness it's not the only way there is a programming language uh, developed by Microsoft Research called Daphne it's working on a completely different logic, not that theory, but really a whole different theory. It's just based on Haras logic. And really you could, could use that to kind of prove properties about your program. Um, and actually I forgot to, to show the most important part for them, and that is the JavaScript. So, what we want to do here is uh, uh, I will implement a main function, this is the entry point function which would, for example, um, let's say it would print the string just keep to the same example It did something weird here, but that's because the type checker is giving us more information. But <clears throat> what we can do at this point is um, uh, I could, so we have this file test.idris. Um, I could use idris as a transpiler. So what this is doing at the moment is it's parsing all the uh, code that we've written on the left side here and it's doing type checking at the same time and then it's, if everything is okay it will produce a, a JS file for us and I could use node, node or I could um, require this JS file in my web application or whatever and also at the same time, I can expose this left pad implementation and be sure wherever this implementation is used within my web application will always satisfy this theorem. So that's like the that's the beauty of it. You set you specify a set of theorems you want to prove or predicates for your functions in order to you have to like say, okay, I want to prove this n predicates, and when I do that, I will agree with myself that this function is working correctly. So once you prove all the predicates here, you can transpile this to .js, and you can use left path column in your web application, knowing that it's uh, um, really res respecting the predicates that we A quick recap, what we did is left pad implementation, um, then another left pad implementation, which is really just like convert the list of characters to string for usability purposes. 
a simple theorem here that we proved for natural numbers, another theorem for the left hand function, which we know is always satisfied, and we specified an entry point to print the output of this to the console. We built it to JavaScript, and when we run it, we load it uh, successfully uh, computed uh, what it need, needed to do. Do you want to? Um, I can speak about this briefly. Um, the thing that you are seeing there is called JS RTS. It stands for JavaScript Runtime System. It's specific to Idris. Um, Idris is really a research programming language. It's I don't think it's used in production anywhere yet. All of this that you are seeing right now is really just an interesting potential. I see potential in it, definitely. And if this looks ugly to you, it looks ugly to me, definitely. And obviously there is there are some missing. Um, I also played with Idris a bit to export the same code to PHP. I wrote a WordPress plugin in this. And it lacked implementation of the slip function in PHP. So really, Idris is open source. If something is not working or, or anything, or you just want to find out more about it, it's all open there on GitHub. You could, for example, if you're interested in the same things that I am, you could, for example, work on the JS RTS, put up a few pull requests, improve this. But right now, this is how it looks like. It's not really looking the best. Um, I don't think it's also possible. Um, yeah, it's it's there, but you can't really maintain it from here. So just like what you would do with, for example, when you try transpiling from TypeScript to JavaScript. You don't, you don't look at the JavaScript output. <laughs> so how does the implementation of number of states to let's say reach your JavaScript? That's what you do at the JS RTS level or at the PHP RTS level. You would, for example, um, let's say we want to define natural numbers as this is a recursive definition, so um, it's okay, we can go ahead and implement it. No. So what we did here was we defined a algebraic data structure called naturals that has. So this is a, a sum type for those of you familiar with uh, TypeScript. You, you, you probably have kind of experience with that. So a value for the type naturals could either be zero or it could be next uh, and, other, and, and other naturals. And of course, this doesn't say much, but we can understand it with examples. So 0 is 0, it's really just an atom. Uh, what would 1 look like with this definition? Just next 0. And you can see that it corresponds uh, with the type definition that we gave here. Um, so next of next 0 is 2, and so on. So you could say like, um, OK, so we can define my one number is natural, and my one is next zero. We do the same for my two. This would be next of my one, and so on. So to answer your question, why I did this, um, you should represent these numbers in PHP through the PHP RTS system, and you have to say something in the terms of like, let's say, let's assume you have this huge function, parse, which asks for some data type from Idris and returns a PHP program. And what you would do is parse, uh, you would pattern match on all of the built-in data types, for example, natural numbers, floats and stuff. And somewhere you would also have parse of 0 equals, it's probably equal to 0 in PHP. And then parse of uh, uh, next naturals 
would be something like um, one plus parts of naturals. So this example is a bit more complex because we're using a bunch of other stuff that I didn't mention before. We are using recursion here. We pattern match on the next naturals. Um, this should not be a natural, but it should be an A. So we pattern match on parse next A, and we say that if, if Idris finds a next A, A can be anything, it can be like next, next, zero, or just zero. When you find this in Idris, it should translate to one plus parse of just A. So it's really kind of like a recursion that's simplifying this part of the equation here up until to the point where we reach, where we reach the bottom case. So it, it's, it's looking something like that. It's not really that, I, I don't really know the details, but it's similar, to the, the approach is something similar to this. Exactly, and when I was working on the WordPress plugin in Idris, it was a missing implementation for the sleep function in PHP. So when you write sleep in Idris, it didn't know how to translate that to PHP. So the pull request was really a one-line addition. Just add this to the pattern match of the parse function. And but all of these things are really just like, it's fun to work on them. It's, uh, which brings us to the question, are the dependent types the future? I definitely enjoy working with it. It's really interesting and exciting thing for the computer to help us write more precise software um, because, as we stated, programming is really hard. And dependent types at the same time brings mathematics closer to programming and it also brings programming closer to mathematics. There are some other theories developed at the moment. Um, one of them is homotopy type theory. I don't know much about it, but I've heard of it. It's about expressing all of the mathematics in terms of computation. So we are in the information age right now, and what that means is that we want to, or at least what the mathematicians are doing right now is they are changing the mathematical foundations to be in line with what's hot right now. And computers are really a good good way to like automate things and stuff, so we really shouldn't be doing what can be automated. If this was interesting to you, there is a free book. It's called Gentle Introduction to Dependent Types of Idris. It starts from the mathematical foundations. Um, it starts, then it proceeds to the lambda calculator that I mentioned. It has a lot of examples and a lot of exercises. And there is also a printed edition available for purchase on Amazon. And if it is, for some reason you don't like it, the name is definitely weird. Um, there are some other readings as well. Um, and if we're speaking about weird names, there is a programming language called Coq. It's developed by... <laughs> it's developed by INRIA, a French uh, institute for mathematics and informatics. It's... I think it's like 20 something years old. It's really a mature programming language and people are already proving, using it to prove stuff. There is a, to prove stuff in the, in production I mean. There is a CompCert thing, which is a project to write the C compiler, uh, express it in Coq, which then would save us from things like undefined behaviors such as buffer overflows and stuff like that. So really it's a, it's a mature programming language. And there is a book called, also free online, uh, called Software Foundations by Benjamin Pierce. It's a really good book and it's, a, it's an interactive one. So you don't like just read it and do nothing. It's like read a piece of part, do exercise and repeat. And there is another programming language. So I mentioned Daphne from Microsoft Research. 
Um, Daphne is not based on dependent types, but Microsoft Research also has or is still working on a programming language. Um, it's called Lin. Um, it's very similar to what Coq and Idris are doing. The only thing I would say they differ is like in uh, syntax, obviously, and maybe some some uh, features. For example, um, you saw how we used I/O in Idris. Um, by I/O, I mean we printed some characters to the terminal. You cannot do that in Coq or Lin. They are really like just pure um, programming languages that don't want to interact with the outside world and they only um, accept as valid what you specify to them. And IO is not part of that because IO is really hard. Uh, I won't get into the details how Idris handles it, but there are these features I mentioned. Idris has a feature of handling that. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, does anyone happen to have any quick questions? Because we're sort of short on time. Make it very quick. Very quick. What is the procedure? What's which language was used to write the Idris compiler? <laughs> okay, it was written originally in Haskell, and I'm not sure about this specific uh, version of uh, Idris, but the creator of Idris, Dr. Edwin Brady, is working on a Idris V2, which is which has a fancier name. It's called Bloodwine, and uh, Bloodwine is written in Bloodwine itself. So, starting from the next version of Idris, it's really a uh, self-hosting programming language. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like, when, like, three years ago or four years ago, like, somebody talked about Idris, and the state of the standard library was really bad, like, he said, well, we, we want to make a standard library, but nobody want, can prove a binary tree in Idris, so, has that improved, like, has the, the standard library did get richer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> what Haskell is doing right now, I think it just is learning from that. Haskell had a has a standard library, or actually has in the previous versions. What it's doing right now is moving towards similar approach with how we are doing in JavaScript. So they're trying to make the standard library as small as possible, and everything else is like in its own, lives in its own module. So, for example. Um, Things like length of string or length of list, replicate, all of those are part of, they're not built in Haskell, but they're part of data.list module. What that means in turn is that, um, I don't think it's changed that much in this because that requires um, a whole community behind this. So you, you would need to have like, people actually interested in to work on libraries for it is that would help. But on the other hand, Coq really has, is doing a good job on that. It's really improved in the past few years. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.